Welcome to everybody here tonight. Um, I just want to make sure that you know that Spanish translation is available. Uh, Francisco Dolores is our interpreter. Hola, buenas noches. Bienvenidos. Uh, solamente quiero hacerles saber que hoy tenemos interpretación y contaremos con este servicio. Francisco Dolores va a hacer la interpretación. And uh, when we, uh, we get going in just a minute, uh, Francisco will become uh, our interpreter uh, uh, simultaneously, and uh, parents will be able to press the um, world uh, symbol at the bottom of their screen, and that will enable them to hear uh, Francisco speak in Spanish as he uh, uh, simultaneously as we go along, so you can hear everything we say in Spanish. Sí, entonces, una vez que nosotros empecemos, uh, Francisco, yo voy a empezar a hacer la interpretación simultánea y esto ustedes van a ver el mundo en su pantalla y usted puede seleccionar eh, ya sea el idioma español y podemos a, hacer esa interpretación. Usted puede escuchar la interpretación. Thank you. So, um, so we'll, uh, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get. So I would like to begin. Uh, oh, also, I should just mention, if you look in the chat, you will see uh, instructions on how to um, access the Spanish translation. And I think Francisco has now gone on to, to do that. Okay, I wanna begin uh, by saying that the last three weeks have been extraordinarily gratifying as we started sure. school. We brought our student body back in person full time. And, you know, we did have a trial run last spring with limited hours and days. Now our students can have the full CUNY experience. And it's wonderful to see. Our students seem to be so happy to be here. As I'm going out and getting to know them, really two grades worth, it has been hard to get to know. Uh, our current seventh graders who were remote as sixth graders all year long, and of course our new sixth graders here this year. So getting to learn their faces and try to recognize them with masks on as they go around uh, has been uh, challenging. <laughs> but we were getting to know them by, you know, who they are and, and uh, what they do and how they speak, and, uh, and they've been fantastic. Um, I love interacting with them. I watch them work in the classroom, uh, playing out at lunch. Uh, you know, the joy in life has been brought back to our school. And the students, as I said, they're terrific to talk to and hang out with, and they've been really good about mask wearing. I know we have to remind kids and so on, uh, but they take to it very well. They've been doing it for a while now, and I think they understand the importance of it. Uh, it's integral to our remaining safe and open, you know, as a school, because uh, the virus continues to affect uh, members of our community. Um, I continually stress the importance of staying masked to our students and to our staff, and our staff is making sure that that happens, that we follow the safety procedures so we can keep our school open. Um, and like I say, we're doing very well, uh, but you know, we have to continue being cautious and safe, and our students are right on board with that. We know our families and our community are still struggling in this pandemic. It's not over yet, even though we're back at school, uh, and we're here to support you, Cunha, is a family-oriented school. We're about supporting your, uh, your family, all our families. So please reach out to us, reach out to us administrators, reach out to teachers, reach out to counselors. Our goal is to bring our students back from isolation into full successful and happy participation in this crucial moment in their academic and social lives. So I wanna welcome you to Cunha's Restorative Restart. So I don't know if I, if I didn't say, my name's James Barnes, the principal. <laughs> and I'll be introducing uh, all our panelists as we go along. Uh, I do wanna uh, let you know our um, uh, departments and department chairs. Of course, they aren't here tonight. Uh, we're having this virtually, um, but we have fantastic staff here. So we have a counseling department uh, and all three counselors are here tonight, actually, on the panel, uh, chaired by Stacey Myrick. 
Uh, we have a terrific special education department chaired by Laura Butterfoss, uh, language arts department chaired by Carrie Demers, uh, English language development chaired by Diane Angst, uh, PE chaired by Rosabelle Lines, math department with Ruth Ann Wolk at the helm. We have a great industrial arts program run by Anthony Agundis, who splits time with us and with Half Moon Bay High School. Our science department is chaired by Kurt Murray. And social studies by Tom Cox, who also does uh, all of our uh, leadership uh, class activities, all the school activities, which is fantastic. Um, Tim Lugo is in that department. He's also our athletic director. Erin O'Connor Brown, who you'll meet shortly, is in that department and also our dean. And we have the Spanish Immersion Program, uh, chaired by Danielle Robles, and our fantastic band uh, program run by uh, Maria Portela Suegra. So we've got a great staff here, um, and uh, you'll be able to see them in the videos uh, that uh, should be coming to you by text and email uh, in uh, fairly short order. And we'll eventually place that in the chat as well. So we're going to go visit all the classes virtually with videos that they've posted. Okay. So you heard me mention the term restorative restart. Um, oops, excuse me. One. Um, there's a number of different points to a restorative restart, and this is something the Cabrillo District has adopted, and we've embraced wholeheartedly here at Cunha. Uh, but some of the, uh, the uh, first four, I think, are, are very important for us to understand. So one of the things we really need to do is connect one-on-one -on -one with our students, with our families, as best as we can. Uh, you know, there are a lot of students. Uh, but right now, for instance, our counselors have been engaged for the last couple of days in meeting every single sixth grader and having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them to learn who they are, what's going on, what their needs are, uh, answering questions and so on. So we're trying to get to learn every single student individually. And we'll be uh, having meetings with parents, uh, there'll be conferences and so on. So we really want to connect with your families and with the students so we all get to know them. I think that's gonna be the most important way that we, um, Bring them into our community, learn who they are, and, and help them with their needs. Uh, the second one was dedica create de dedicated time and space for relationship building and re-engagement. I mean, this is something we spent a lot of time talking about um, with our staff, uh, making time in your day, in your curriculum, to get to know the students, to engage with them. Uh, we have uh, a number of different initiatives where that's happening in spe specific classes, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, another piece that we've embraced as well, uh, the third one, implement positive and restorative discipline practices. Um, for instance, and we've had this before the pandemic, um, we now have alternatives to suspension for drugs and alcohol. We found that it's not very useful to simply suspend a student out if they're caught with some kind of substance, because then they're home on essentially a forced vacation and they may well be engaging in that substance use again. Instead, we divert students to uh, uh, counseling. It's their choice. They could take suspension, the family's choice. Uh, and the families almost always opt for counseling services. We partner uh, with adolescent counseling services to deliver that. So that's a very important piece of that. In addition, we're really working to deal with student conflict through restorative discipline practices. Restorative justice is the term you may have heard of, where you know there may be some consequences that might uh, involve. You could even have a suspension, but even if if you don't, the most important thing is we get kids to talk about why they're involved in conflict, and we found it very very beneficial to talk these things through. Students learn about each other. And rather than being in opposition or in groups, they find connections and begin to break down some of the walls that lead to conflict. Very, very powerful stuff and something we're pushing and endorsing throughout our disciplinary practices wherever we can. And you know, student wellness screenings, a good deal of what we're doing right now with the um, with the one-on-ones uh, is about checking in with students and seeing what's going on with them. We have a number of expanded counseling offerings 
uh, for social emotional wellness. Uh, and we'll talk about that as well. And that's really going to help us get to know the students and what they need as well. So let me move on to um, uh, some of the initiatives that we have here at Cunio. Here's a whole laundry list of things that I don't know how often people realize uh, that you know, we have these things going on. Um, so for instance, one of the first things we have for a new student here at Cunha is a sixth grade social and academic skills curriculum. The whole first quarter of a sixth grader's experience here at Cunha uh, in their social studies class is to talk about these very issues, the issues of pre-adolescence, uh, coming to middle school, how to handle that, the much larger social world they're in, the larger responsibilities, uh, the more independence they have, how to deal with conflict with each other, and learn academic skills to be successful in a school where now they have multiple teachers and have to juggle multiple different assignments and, and, and have the executive function to make that all happen. So very, very important curriculum. This year, we also expanded uh, what we call Math Plus and Literacy Lab. Now, Math Plus we've had in the past, we brought it back here and we're rotating most of our students through Math Plus. Literacy Lab, we started a couple of years ago for students that need extra help uh, with their reading and writing. We've expanded that to most students as well. We'll rotate through that in the elective curriculum. And this is specifically designed to make sure that all our students are um, coming back into grade level, uh, find out what learning loss they have had during the pandemic. Some students were able to engage very well. Some students had great difficulty. And even those students who were able to handle Zoom school really well did not get the full curriculum that they would have gotten in regular school. Our hours were slimmer. They didn't see their teachers as often. The teachers could not teach them what they would expect to uh, fully in the grade level. So all of us are getting that academic support in math and uh, language arts. We also started last year a wellness class. We've expanded that elective to two uh, different sections, one for seventh and eighth grade. So that's also on the elective rotation for them. Uh, and it's both physical and mental wellness. Uh, it's conducted by uh, Mr. Mobley, one of our PE teachers, who I think connects very, very well with, with the students. So that's a great initiative as well. The focus is definitely on electives. And also we have a new, uh, a new course this year called Cubs Connect uh, that's using the Connect with Kids curriculum uh, to help our students, again, social, emotional wellness, uh, dealing with each other, uh, thinking about issues they have and how they uh, can thrive and do well uh, in school and in, in the larger society around them. So, and I put, uh, when we post this, uh, besides posting the Zoom, by the way, on our website, I'll also post this uh, PowerPoint so you'll be able to click on the links to any of these if you want to see these curricula. I mentioned the counselor one-on-one -on -one meetings, and I'm sure they'll be able to talk to you about that when they speak. Um, and one of the uh, nice, uh, really cool things that our counselors are working on right now is they've created creating a uh, wellness room or a chill space for our students right near the counseling offices. Uh, they're turning it into a place where students can come take a break from the social world or from whatever anxieties or issues they're dealing with and find a calm space to, to kind of reset and, and be able to go out there um, and do it again. So this is, this is a, a great place for our kids to be uh, under the supervision of our counselors where they can really uh, feel safe and calm and, uh, and regain their energies. Um, we also have uh, expanded counseling offerings uh, that, um, that work with parents and families that more than just what we are able to offer here is our district. We do have a lot of district uh, social emotional counselors. We've expanded that through the Care Solace program. So it can connect families with counselors uh, that are you know, outside of what the district can provide themselves. And that's a great initiative as well. Uh, we continue our uh, continuation of services team uh, and that team meets every other week to make sure that when students are having a problem academically, socially, or what have you, emotionally, that we're able to identify those students and, and work out what the best supports for them are. So that's a great way to make sure nobody slips through the cracks. I mentioned alternatives to suspension uh, as, our, um, as a disciplinary practice that uh, is much more productive 
than just you know, sending it out of school for a few days. I mentioned restorative justice sessions for students in conflict. And, uh, and one of the nice things, uh, I worked on this when I was up at the high school quite a bit, and Cunha did as well. The district is really supporting uh, our uh, positive behavior interventions and support program, to make sure our students know what, what to do, where they are, make sure they understand classroom procedures, because understanding what's expected of students isn't necessarily a given. Sometimes people need to know what's expected of them, especially if they haven't been in school for a while. And we want to make sure that students know this is the expected behavior and we want to reward that expected behavior. And that um, and explicitly teaching that and rewarding that makes for a better, calmer and uh, more productive school. So that's just a, that's a number of things that we have going on here at Cunha to support your students. And that's very, very important to us. Okay. And one more thing, I mean, we're, it's now we're back in school fully. Uh, we can begin to plan many of these things. Uh, for instance, and I'll talk about it uh, in a little while, the sixth grade outdoor education is happening in just a few weeks. And uh, the students, the sixth graders will be having an assembly about that tomorrow. And we'll be sending information uh, to sixth grade parents about that. So that's going to go out uh, very shortly and get uh, people signed up for this amazing experience. We have an athletic program. I think you'll be hearing about that from maybe our boosters and from um, Boys and Girls Club. We have student clubs. Uh, I've already heard about several that are starting to get going again, you know, because we haven't had any for a while. Uh, so that usually the students work with the teachers to make that happen. We're talking about field trips and what we can do. We're still limited in that. Uh, we're working on the possibilities of, of a dance and seeing what is safe to do and what's an appropriate way to have a dance. So we have one tentatively scheduled for October 1st to make sure that we do that. If we're gonna do that, we do it safely. Uh, we've already had a great spirit day last Friday. Fantastic out in the field. Everybody having such a great time out there. Uh, it was a really, really fun day. Uh, lunchtime activities are continuing. We'll be doing that uh, tomorrow. Um, cub compliments are going out. Uh, outstanding cub luncheons or, uh, or some other alternative practice to make sure that we're recognizing our outstanding cubs. Music at lunch happening tomorrow. And uh, the Boys and Girls Club program after school, they are fantastic partners for us. And, uh, and they are able to help tutor and help our students with homework and give them a safe place to be after after school ends each day. So that's just some of the things that we do here at Cunha. And then, so outdoor ed, uh, the dates of that, and I, and I think many of the sixth grade parents heard me talk about this when we did orientation. Uh, that's October 4th through October 8th. It's expensive, but we're looking to see what we can do to help that situation out. That may cost around $600. Uh, we have to pay for teachers uh, who are going because many of our teachers go to that. We have to pay for subs for that. We have to pay for buses. We have to pay for a number of things, plus the tuition itself through the outdoor education program. Um, we are welcoming all students. Uh, we'll be having, so I said the first student meeting is tomorrow. We'll be having a parent information meeting uh, as soon as I know we're scheduling it. Um, it is a program. My own son went through it as a sixth grader. I uh, went back as a senior, as a cabin leader. Uh, it transforms the kids. They don't, they can't stop talking about what they learned in outdoor education. Um, they, uh, they get to know uh, the staff there is fantastic. The outdoor world at Jones Gulch YMCA, uh, uh, you know, up there um, in the forest and uh, you know, in La Honda. And uh, they go there every year and they just, they love it. And if you've never had your students spend more than a few days or even at any time at all away from home, uh, it, like I say, it can be transformative. It's the first step into an independent world for many, many students. Uh, and I really recommend it. I'd like all our students to go. Next, I, I think I did see early on uh, uh, in the presentation, uh, parents were asking about Skulu. So for uh, new parents of sixth graders or anybody else who hasn't signed up for school, this is the main way that you get to know your students' uh, assignments, 
ongoing grades as much in real time as they can be. When a teacher finishes grading an assignment and posts those grades, it affects their general grade, their cumulative grade, and you'll see that. And you can identify problems very quickly if you're seeing your student maybe not turning in assignments or getting poor grades. It's a great way for parents to be able to see that kind of thing and know what they have for homework, know what assignments they're coming up. Um, and you can contact all the teachers right then and there. There's lists all their teachers and you can email them individually or as a group to, uh, to ask any questions about what's going on or, or uh, if, you, if you have requests or needs. So um, parents can get onto Schoolloop through a computer. They also have a Schoolloop mobile app, which uh, uh, many parents use. Uh, and even if you just even if you sign up with a computer, um, it will send you a daily email and the daily email will allow you just to simply go into it to look at the grades, look at the assignments and so on. So it's a great tool. Um, I've used it as a parent uh, when when my son was in high school um, and at CUNY as well. And uh, and it was very, very, very useful. And of course, uh, we've been using it in the district here for a long time. It's our main, most important um student parent portal so please if you have not signed up for school loop now is the time and uh, we can help anybody who, who needs assistance in that okay um i'm going to stop talking for a minute and i'd like to introduce uh my assistant principal mr ben bartell hey welcome everybody uh super excited everyone's here tonight uh, really excited to have the kids back in school um, just by you know looking at the kids when they're outside during lunch and break time, you can really tell how excited the kids are to be back and, and to see their peers, to be back in school, to see their teachers, uh, and have a sense of normalcy again. So, um, yeah, really excited to have that. Uh, James, can you put the next slide up? Awesome, thank you. So, uh, as far as my realm and scope here at Cunha, uh, my my main responsibilities are student safety, uh, our facilities. Um, I have a, a background in special education, so I take a lot of the special education duties on, um, like Mr. Barnes is talking about, doing a lot of the positive behavior support, uh, trying to keep our kids on campus as much as we can rather than to send them home. Uh, that's really our goal here at Cunha. And also to, on that same note, uh, looking at student attendance, what can we do to make sure that our kids are on time to class, that they're on time to school, uh, and that we're keeping them uh, on campus as much as possible. So. Uh, anyone have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, like I said, really excited to be back and, uh, and excited for the school year. Thank you, Mr. Bartell. I want to introduce our counselors now, uh, Stacy Myrick, uh, Janice Lee, and Sarah Wilhelms. Hi, everybody. I see lots of familiar names on here. Sorry, I can't see your faces, but <laughs> hopefully soon I get to see your kids. So that's really good. Um, I'm Sarah Wilhelms. I'm one of the counselors here. This year I'm job sharing 50-50 with Ms. Myrick. Um, and we are both covering A through L. So I'm on campus on Thursday and Fridays and alternating Wednesdays. Um, Ms. Myrick is there on Monday and Tuesdays and the other Wednesdays. So if you email one of us, it goes to both of us. If you call one of us, it goes to both of us. So um, just, tr just remember Sarah or Stacy, Myrick or Wilhelm, so we'll get, we'll get to you, I promise. Um, and we are also working with Miss Lee, uh, such awesome counselors that I love working with and so grateful that we have them for our kids. Miss um, Lee covers M through Z and um, she's there every day, ready to be there with your kids. So um, that's our counseling staff. I'm gonna turn it over to Thanks, Ms. Myrick, yeah. Oh, I think I'm up first. Um, thanks, Sarah. Um, yes, yeah, so my name is Janice Lee. I am one of the counselors uh, and I am there every day. <laughs> so you can always find um, one of the counselors at least um, to support your students. And I just wanted to describe a little bit about what we do because it has been so long um, since we've been able to just uh, implement our full counseling services for the students here. And um, even the eighth graders will probably barely remember what we used to do um, when life was on campus. So we meet with students individually. Um, we also are trying to put together some groups in collaboration with our school linked uh, services therapist. 
um, recreate small groups to address needs uh, for students who are going through similar issues. And then we um, often go into classrooms. We do this a lot with sixth grade, but every single grade, um, we do go into the classroom to prevent, uh, present different lessons. Our first one is typically on anti-bullying. So we can establish that clear message um, for all of our CUNA students. And then of course, uh, this is middle school. So issues come up with friends, with peers. So we do a lot of conflict resolution with students. We take a restorative approach which means we want to make sure that everybody is um, feeling heard, everybody is a part of the solution. So that's a big um, push of how we will be addressing any potential issues this year. Um, in general, we cover three main topics, which is academic, of course. So students that are struggling or wanna get ahead in school, we definitely will help with um, academic issues. Personal, um, anything that your student's going through personally at home, if you feel like they're just having a hard time, maybe adjusting back into in-person school or just coming off of a unstable year last year. And then of course the social piece. Um, in middle school, there's so much transition as far as making new friends and of course getting reacquainted with some old friends. Um, that they didn't get to see much of last year. So lots of social counseling as well. Those are our three um, main topics that just like we encourage students to you know, come talk to us. We're a good starting point if you have a question and that goes for students and parents as well. Um, if we are not the person that can answer or that can help, we will connect you with who can. And I'll pass it off to Stacy, who will give you a little more information about what we've been doing lately. Um, and as well as how to get a hold of us. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, like we've already mentioned a couple times um, in this meeting so far, we are doing one on one meetings with your students, and we were able to complete most of the sixth grade, or we're still completing most of the sixth grade this week. We called them minute meetings, um, but it was such an awesome first experience at it. They did not last a minute. So it is going to take us a little bit longer than we previously anticipated, which we were so excited about. And it has been so fun to get to know each and every sixth grader. So we are going to finish up our sixth grade this week. We'll move on to our eighth grade in the next coming weeks. And then for seventh grade, we're gonna go ahead and try and do short-term meetings with uh, students and schedule appointments for families to come in as well to give an opportunity to connect with the school and the counselors and just make sure everybody's doing okay and just have a, a touch to start the school year back again. So we're excited about it. We had an awesome experience so far this week. We have enjoyed every minute of getting to see the kids in person and getting to know them. So we're really excited about this opportunity um, and we look forward to re meeting the rest of the kids. Um, like Miss Lee said, we are available. Um, you can contact us through email. You can um, also give us a call. So please know that we are available. We are here to support you and your students. So please feel free to reach out. We pretty much cover anything and are here to help. So let us know if you need anything and we look forward to seeing and meeting all of our students and families. All right, thank you to our counseling department. Fantastic, okay. Um, I would like now to introduce uh, Erin O'Connor Brown, who is our Dean of Students. Good evening, everyone. Muy buenas noches a todos. Um, I am a bilingual Dean of Students, but I will be speaking in English so that our translator has an easier time with that. Uh, my job as the Dean is to work with st supporting students mostly academically. Um, I work closely with the counselors. I support students who are our English language learner population um, working towards reclassification. Uh, we do goal setting and focus on targeted areas to help them earn reclassification. I help students who are struggling academically um, create a path towards success by working with the counselors and I am here to help um, if anyone needs me. So please feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. And uh, now I think we want to uh, hear from 
uh, some of our parents and parent groups who are supporting our school. So first of all, I would like to bring on our PTO parents. Hi, I'm Katie Ashero, and uh, together with Amber Storia, we will be your co-presidents of PTO this year. Um, she'll be coming on in a moment to talk about some other things that we're doing this year. Um, I also just wanted to plug a couple of volunteer opportunities we have. We are looking for board positions for communications and secretary. If anyone is interested in joining our board, um, please let us know. We are very interested in having you on board and it's been fun so far. Both Amber and I are sixth grade parents, so we're learning as we go. So don't be fearful if you are a new parent. Um, please sign up and help. We also have some committees uh, that need help as well, particularly the dances, organizing those, as well as um, staff appreciation days. So with that, I will hand it over to my amazing partner, Amber. Um, can we have the next slide, please, Mr. Barnes? Thank you. Um, so just some quick information. Hopefully some of this is familiar, but um, in case it's not, um, some quick ways to contact the PTO. You can email us at cuniapto at gmail.com. You can jump on the Cunha PTO website um, and you can also follow information on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. We're doing our best to keep um, information up to date on those social media streams. Um, but that is something that a communications person could help us with if you're interested in, in joining the board in that capacity. Um, for fundraising, um, middle school is different than elementary school and that we really only have two major fundraisers for the entire year. So one of those fundraisers is coming up. It's going to be annual giving, and we're going to kick that off September 13th through the 24th. Um, so our goal for that annual giving fundraiser is going to be $45,000. We will be sharing more information as we get a little closer to the 13th, but you can expect that your kids will bring home flyers and envelopes with information about how to donate. Um, some of the things that these funds help pay for are a variety of um, department stipends for the various departments that Mr. Barnes shared earlier in the presentation. Um, they help pay for student and staff recognition, for electives on campus, um, for assemblies, just a variety of activities that um, help support enrichment um, at Cunha for all of the kids. Um, so we are excited to launch that campaign starting September 13th. Again, your kids will be bringing home envelopes and we'll be sharing information on social media and online. Um, and then just a, a general point of information, our meetings are being held on Zoom right now and they are the third Tuesday of every month at 5.30. Please jump on and join us, um, see what's going on. It's um, an interesting time and there are always opportunities for people to help, even if it's to help you know, one time with one event or to get further involved with um, an ongoing board position. So um, hit us up with any questions you have. We're hoping to work with the staff and, and with the kids in leadership to make um, the events and activities that the PTO supports uh, really fun this year for all of the kids and staff to enjoy. And I think that's, I think that's it from us. Thank you, Amber and Katie, much appreciated. Um, I'd like to talk just briefly um, about ELAC, our English Language, English Learner Advisory Committee. Um, I wanna really thank Jeanette Ramos, who's uh, uh, run the uh, committee for the last few years, but she has, uh, her son has gone off to the high school and we are in need of parents of English language learners 
Spanish speaking parents, Spanish speaking families or whatever, uh, we want you, we need a strong and robust ELAC group uh, to help advise us and inform us of the needs of Spanish speaking students and parents and families. Uh, this is very, very important. So I'm putting out a pitch right now to recruit Alex, please to uh, help us with uh, 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 the English Learner Advisory Council. So get in contact with me uh, or anyone at the school, um, including our liaison uh, who speaks Spanish, uh, Isabel Anguiano, who's uh, at, the, at the front desk. Uh, she can always connect you with that because she helps coordinate it. So um, it's a very important part of our school and we're really looking for folks. Okay. Sorry, there's a horn in the background. <laughs> okay, um, my next uh, group I'd like to have up would be uh, from Cunha Athletic Boosters. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sandra Ryan, and um, I'm co-president of the Cunha Athletic Boosters with Sarah Jackson. Um, basically, what our volunteer organization does is we provide funds to support all the CUNA sports um, that are thankfully back in action um, as of this week. And um, we really want to thank our partners, uh, the Boys and Girls Club, who came to our rescue a few years ago when um, CUNA sports um, were cut from the district funding. So with their partnership um, and huge help, we are able to continue offering sports um, for all the middle school students. Um, and as of last week, as I mentioned, we um, are, the students are participating in the fall sports, which is volleyball, cross country and flag football. Um, I know that, you know, the students are all very excited and, um, you know, it's a very important part of middle school. Um, we are uh, looking at holding some fundraisers this year in order to continue um, raising money for our organization. Um, they're listed on the screen and um, can always use some help. Um, in addition, we will also be holding apparel sales. Um, look out for some announcements for our Cunha Athletic Boosters website that will um, be coming out hopefully in the next few weeks. Um, and it will have a link in order um, for students and parents to buy um, apparel such as uh, Cunha um, sweatshirts and uh, PJ pants, etc. I know a lot of the students are wearing the Cunha masks now around campus, so um, we appreciate all the support. Um, just like PTO mentioned, um, this is all parent and volunteer um, based and run. We have various board positions that are open. Um, we could really use someone um, who has some website design, um, someone to help us get our website up and running. Um, and we are also looking for a photographer um, that can help with the team photos. Um, Shanti was great, but um, her daughter has also moved on to the high school. So um, if any of you are um, photographers and have some time to donate, please uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and uh, you can also find us on the Cunha website if you want to send us an email. Thank you so much for that, Sarah. Um, and now uh, I'm going to uh, move on to um, the Cabrillo Education Foundation. Uh, they have a video. I'm going to drop the uh, uh, share for a second to make sure that the audio plays. So give me a second here to make that happen. Okay. We'll see if this goes properly.
On behalf of the Cabrillo Education Foundation, I wanna welcome you to the new school year. My name's Corinne Buecher and I'm the Executive Director of CEF. I'm grateful to have a few minutes of your time to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do for your student. I'd especially like to give a huge shout out for all the PTO, ELAC, and Booster volunteers. They are the heart of your school and I highly recommend getting involved. It's also important that you know there's another way your student is supported as they go through their journey in the CUSD schools. The Cabrillo Education Foundation is an important part of the funding puzzle. CEF was founded in 2006 by community members and parents just like you. They had a vision of creating a long-term stable source of funding for the local public schools. Today, that endowment is over three and a half million dollars. The CEF mission is to support and elevate the educational experience in all seven of the Coastside Public Schools. Since 2012, we've done that by allocating more than a million dollars to support teachers and students. This year, we are providing $186,000 for programs that wouldn't exist without it. Our main focus is to improve student literacy, next generation science standards, computer science, innovation, as well as college and career readiness. We are also working hard to leverage partnerships with other organizations to bring much needed support. It's our goal to continue to build the endowment and create a long-term stable source of funding for our Coastside students. Now more than ever, it's important to invest in education. We encourage you to go to our website to learn more about who we are. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Please know one thing, we are here for you. We want to hear from you. Do not hesitate to reach out. Our board wishes you and your student a very successful year. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that worked great. Thank you very much to the Cabrillo Education Foundation for all they do for us. Um, next, I want to bring up... On behalf of the Cabrillo hey, Education hey, hey, Foundation, hey, I want to welcome you to the new school. That's not what I want. There we go. That's better. Um, so I want to welcome uh, uh, one of our most important partners at CUNA, uh, the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, they got us through the uh, year of uh, remote learning by assisting our students with their learning pods and their tutoring, uh, their, their work was invaluable. And it, uh, it's, it helped so many families uh, who couldn't otherwise uh, access remote learning to do so. Um, and they are here with us now working uh, the after school program to support and tutor our kids. And uh, in addition, um, they are uh, running our athletic program and so much, they do so much for us. So I'd like to welcome uh, Jill Jacobson to uh, speak about the Boys and Girls Club. Thank you so much. It is such a joy to work with a school that is such a good partner and so welcoming. Um, I will talk about three offerings that we have for young people. Um, if you ever need more information, please contact our staff. Our phone numbers, emails are all at the website that's on the slide for you. Um, as our colleagues at Cunha Boosters mentioned, um, we are now at Boys and Girls Club, the sponsor of the Cunha Athletics Program. The program runs year round with eight sports offered. All sports are offered for both boys and girls in all three grades. Um, they are, the current season is underway with cross country, flag football and volleyball and will be followed after in uh, October around Halloween by basketball. Um, I'm delighted to share that all sports are no cut sports, which means that if your um, son or daughter tries out, they will be placed on a team. Um, 
and also let you know that there is a fee associated with the sports but no student is ever excluded if they can't pay the fee. So if the fee is a challenge, please talk to our staff at Boys and Girls Club and we will make something work for you. We want young people playing sports after school. Also just acknowledge that the registration process right now is not seamless. There are a couple websites you need to go to. We are working on this. And I apologize, but we're here to help you. Just call our office, email. Um, we've got people that speak Spanish there that can help as well. We will get you registered for the sports you're interested in. Beyond the after school sports program, Boys and Girls Club is also delighted to sponsor an after school academic and enrichment program. It's open every day after school, whenever school ends. So if there's a minimum day or the Thursday early release day, we open right when the school ends and go till 6 p.m. We offer tutoring, um, fitness, and gaming, fun time. It is an enrollment program, not a drop-in program. And you can find more about enrolling by visiting our website or coming to our office. We ask students to enroll for at least a quarter at a time. Um, we have also a drop-in lunch program for young people that maybe are looking for a place to be at lunch if they don't feel like they're as comfortable hanging out with the big crowds. That's a drop-in program. Young people can come any day. We have a separate um, time for sixth graders and then seventh and eighth graders. And that happens in E8 um, every day at lunch. And finally, new this year, sponsored with the district, will be drop-in coverage for young people on no school days. It is not beginning on Monday. We do not have any offerings on Labor Day. But what the goal is, is on a no school day like Labor Day moving forward, we'd have activities that young people could drop in, basketball, football, game tournament, something of that nature. So starting with the holidays in October and November, you should be able to find those opportunities on our website. Thank you so much for your partnership, Mr. Bertel, Mr. Barnes, the counselor, and Ms. O'Connor Brown. We love working with you, and we're so glad to have all these parents as part of our family at Cunha. Thank you, Jill. Much appreciated. And thank you to everybody who's been here tonight. Um, I want to uh, go to our final slide here uh, because by now you should have probably received an email or a text that says, uh, gives the link to our uh, teacher's uh, videos. Hopefully that's working okay. If there's anything that doesn't work, please let us know to make sure that they uh, do and I can correct that. Um, and uh, and also, I think uh, Ben has put uh, the uh, links uh, in the uh, Q&A or in the chat, so you can uh, check that out directly uh, without having to look for your email or whatnot. Um, so again, thank you so much for everybody who's been here. You can see uh, how many partners are working with us, how many people are dedicated to making Cunha uh, the best school it can be. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of our staff and our parent support, everybody involved uh, with, you know, supporting our fantastic kids. I love them. Uh, they're so cool. And, uh, and it's, we're, we're back and I couldn't be happier with that. Um, so at this point, I'm going to stop sharing the uh, screen and we'll go through any uh, questions uh, that you may have. You type them up in the Q&A and we can answer them live rather than uh, typing them back to you, uh, you know, until, until folks are, are, are ready to go. Uh, so we're happy to be here for a while and answer uh, any of those questions. So uh, again, uh, thanks to everybody and I will drop the share right now. Okay. All right, James, I, I see a lot of the questions there were a while ago asking about outdoor ed for seventh graders. Yeah, that is a hard one for me, and it's something I feel strongly, uh, uh, you know, that that it's such a shame that that is lost. I mean, to be to give you the short answer, uh, it is a casualty of the pandemic. 
Uh, it's not something I can make happen again. And I know folks have, have sometimes said, well, I mean, you could have sent seventh graders there. It's not just a matter of that. It's a matter of having to recruit a whole bunch of faculty who don't necessarily go out to outdoor ed and ask them to participate in it. Uh, it requires um, getting a whole bunch of new uh, buses from the district who's having trouble coming up with buses. It requires recruiting a whole bunch of students who are at the high school who are already committed to the sixth grade. It's not so simple as simply to say we're going to have the seventh graders as well. A small school like this, we, we just don't have the capacity to run two of them. Um, and, and Mr. Barnes, on the other hand, too, the San Mateo County Outdoor Ed does not take seventh graders. So only sixth graders are accepted in the fall. They don't let us come as the sixth grade class after the fall. So the cutoff is sixth graders in the fall, and that is the age limit for students to participate with San Mateo County Outdoor Ed. But on the other hand, some people asked about this, I think, in the chat. What can we do to at least in part make it up to our seventh graders? And the and last year, when we knew that it was not going to happen uh, for our sixth graders last year, we made a commitment to come up with a program, a series of events, something that we can really do to give them a sense of that special attention and something uh, unique. And we are working on that. Uh, and we will announce that as soon as we have it. Um, it's a challenging piece to put together, uh, but we're going to do it. We're going to make, we're going to do what we can to uh, give our seventh graders a sense of that kind of, uh, of program, and we'll do what we can with it. Uh, so stay tuned. You will hear about that this year. Uh, you have my word on that. Um, I don't want to leave them with nothing. I just, it, it bothers me a lot that we couldn't do that, but it's just not something we have the capacity for. We have some other questions. Let's see. Um, There's been a handful of questions just about the field at lunch and break. Oh yeah, that's a good question. So the field, um, we have uh, generally kept it closed for right now because with the double lunch, we have um, PE is going out to the field uh, and they need that for their work. So when, when we have kids at one lunch, there's kids who are uh, in school and classes. And so PE is part of that. So I've been meeting with the PE teachers and we're going to work out a schedule for certain days they can go out there. Um, and, you know, they do enjoy the field. And I want to make sure that that is when we do that, that it's done uh, with plenty of supervision, uh, generally so that uh, uh, students will be going there to play soccer or other field sports and not going to try to go as far away they can from administration and hide in the corners and, and do things they shouldn't be doing. And that's the challenge for supervising uh, nearly 700 kids with you know, three or four uh, supervisors and administrators. So, um, you know, yes, they will be going out to the field It'll be more limited than it was in the past, but that'll make it more fun. And we want to really make sure that it's uh, uh, done for field sports, uh, even in that chance uh, when they go out there. But it's a challenge of the uh, double lunch to make that happen. So we're working it out with PE. Hey, James, I've had a couple of people answer, uh, ask this question. I've answered them privately, but basically, what are the protocols for a COVID, uh, COVID exposure? Yeah, so uh, we're following the uh, uh, San Mateo County Office of Education uh, Pandemic Recovery Framework. Um, when we hear about a case or a close contact, uh, we contact trace them to find out what's happened. Right? Did, were they within uh, six feet for over 15 minutes? Have they tested positive? And there's a whole decision tree of what happens uh, whether they have a modified quarantine, whether they can return to school quickly because they've been vaccinated and they don't have any symptoms, um, and so on and so forth, to full 14-day quarantine. Uh, it all depends on their vaccination status, whether they've had symptoms, uh, whether they've been tested, positive or negative, how close somebody's been to somebody and for how long. And all that triggers, uh, I work very closely with Teresa Strecker, our, our uh, school nurse, and with Susan Vanna, our, our district nurse, to make sure we're following those protocols correctly. Now, when it comes to notification, uh, if we have a positive case at school, 
um, we will notify the whole school that there's been a positive case. And I think I did one of those uh, last week. Um, if there have been close contacts to that person uh, that had been at school, we will notify the, uh, the close contacts uh, with a letter. And that could be uh, a handful of students. And we also may uh, notify a classroom of, of students and so forth. So far, that has not happened to a significant degree. Um, but we're always making sure that we're following the proper guidelines because we do have confidentiality. I know folks want to know uh, who turned positive, who's, who's close contact, which classroom was it, and so on. And the information we give out is limited, but we are following the proper safety protocols and notifying who needs to be notified and at what level. Uh, so it's complicated. We're trying to make sure we do it right, preserve people's privacy and confidentiality, while notifying people who need to know and tracking that to make sure it's safe for people to return, whether they, for instance, they've been a close contact, did they end up testing positive or begin to show symptoms, or they never did, and their quarantine, and limited quarantine ends and they can return to school and that kind of thing. So it's a, a process we're following closely and we notify people according to the pandemic framework. Hope that answers. It's not wildly satisfying, but uh, we, we do follow proper protocols for that. There's a question about where kids can go at lunch if they're new or just wanting to get to, like a little bit smaller group. And I was just going to answer Boys and Girls Club does have an opportunity at lunch, as well as we typically had students in the library. Um, however, that is under construction. And so Miss. Mrs. Grover is also working with students at lunch as an opportunity in a smaller group setting, um, just to kind of in a less intimidating uh, venue. We also will be having spirit activities with their first period classes. So hopefully that they will have an opportunity to connect and get to know students as well through different activities that will be going on at lunch. But there's also a couple options um, that are just a small, a little bit smaller setting for students if needed. But also, please feel free to reach out to their counselor and see if there's anything we can do to support them as well. You know, that brings up something I probably should have put in the formal presentation, but I didn't do that. I did, I think, when we did our orientation for uh, uh, new sixth graders, is the fact that we have this double lunch this year. Uh, and we did that uh, before the COVID. We wanted to do that in order to make it a little simpler to uh, oversee that many students without having all the students out at once. And we also thought it would give our sixth graders a chance to, to get to know the campus, to know us, to, to do things without uh, the older kids, um, make them feel a little more comfortable. Um, as it happened, it's worked out well for COVID in the sense that there's fewer kids uh, and we can keep them all outdoors and there's enough tables for them to sit at, uh, which wouldn't have been the case of all of them out at once. Uh, so it's done so far after three weeks, it's done very, very well. Um, and I really enjoy the sixth grade lunch, uh, getting to know those kids. And, uh, and, and, you know, it's a lot of fun out there. They play and play and play. You know, uh, we keep them for 15 minutes uh, to, you know, sit down, eat and so on. And then, then there's a, a go play bell that rings and then they can get uh, balls in the ball closet and go play basketball or whatnot. Um, and uh, for our seventh and eighth graders, it means it's easier for us to see them, know them, get uh, talk to them as well. Uh, it's just a, a much more uh, relaxed uh, lunch than it was with all the kids out at once. Uh, ideally, we would have the six in a non-COVID world. We'd have the sixth graders eat in uh, the MU um, and then go out to play. Uh, and then when the next lunch came, we keep the seventh graders in the MU and the eighth graders outside, and then uh, until the go play. Uh, but right now, of course, uh, everybody's outside. Um, but, you know, eventually when we get past uh, uh, COVID, we hope to implement it that way. Have any other good questions out there? Hey, Mr. Burns, I just wanted to mention for families who are interested, there is a COVID dashboard that's up now on the district's website. If families want to take a look at that, it, it shows how many cases have been identified throughout the entire district and it will continue to track week over week. That just got launched this week. So families can also reference that if they are interested. 
Thank you for, for uh, reminding us of that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I see something in the Q and A here. Compliance rate with Hazel Health checks. Hazel Health has become uh, an optional thing. We encourage families to do it, uh, and I, we, we're not we we track it a little bit, but we haven't been uh, requiring it every day. So I think it's lower than it used to be. Um, but uh, we do encourage families to do that to make sure their students are um, coming to school. But I don't think it's heavily used compared to when it was a requirement. I don't remember the numbers right off the bat, but I can look that up if anybody uh, well, would be interested further. Oh, there's a question about tutoring. Uh, so I think our best bet, well, I think we're, we're right now I'm working with the district um, on a tutoring program. So I've been working with our uh, uh, director of uh, special programs on a tutoring program that we're gonna to try to make available to students. Uh, and I think that will probably replace uh, what we used to have as homework club, which was sort of drop in and wasn't particularly accountable for the kids. Uh, but right now, until we get that program going, our bet, your best bet for tutoring help would be to get kids involved in the Boys and Girls Club after school program. But we will be bringing in a tutoring program. I just have to work out the details of the district. Can I just say one more thing? Sorry. Um, one more. Uh, there was a couple questions in the chat or something or in the Q&A just about Chromebooks. We are hoping to get Chromebooks soon. So this week, right, Mr. Barnes? They are here. Please, they're, they're here. here. They're, they're, they're so if your student submitted. does not have one, Please go see Ms. Grover in uh, room D1 tomorrow or as soon as possible. But they are here, so we want to make sure every student gets that. We know it's been difficult. I have to apologize for that. It's not something I can control, but uh, it took its time to happen. But, uh, but every student will have them. We'll have, uh, if they forget theirs or they break or something, you'll be able to get loaners occasionally as you need to. Uh, so we want to make sure that all the students are able to have the Chromebooks at all times. I think at some point, too, even those Chromebooks are going to get turned in and replaced with uh, newer ones. Um, at least right now, we want everybody to have a Chromebook of any kind. So I'm very, very glad that that's finally happening. Any other questions about Chromebooks? Any other uniforms? Um, I'm not sure it is available right now since we're not dressing for PE. Um, I don't think the PE uh, department has made an order. Uh, if we get to the point where we're going to go into the locker rooms and order PE clothes, I think they will uh, uh, make that available to everyone. Um, you could check with the PE department. I'm not sure whether they have any available, but they would have been old ones you know, left over from previous years. Usually they do a purchase every year to uh, um, uh, make sure the kids can get them, but we're not using them. But I think the uh, um, boosters do have some of the... Uh, the swag, the stuff that's not the uniforms, but you know, the uh, jeans and sweatshirts and all that. So you can certainly get that. Okay, well, if there are no more questions, I think we can uh, say good night to everybody. I really appreciate everybody's time and coming out here tonight. I hope you enjoy the uh, teacher videos. Uh, there's one more question. Let's see what it is. You're most welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, have a great night, everyone. Thank you to everyone on the panel for being here. And we'll, we'll see you at school.